Hi, welcome to the lecture on the ESP32. Now the ESP32 is a family of SOCs or what we call system on chip. It contains of a single or dual core uh, configurations with the extensor LX6 from Tensilica, now known as CADETS, and it's a 32-bit RISC core system. Now the ESP32 has been mounted on many different development boards and we are focusing on the same development kit okay, that we have been using in the lab so far. Alright, so these are some of the features. Alright, so I'll not go through all of them. Okay, some of them you can explore with the uh, board that you already have. Alright, and this is the pinout all right, uh, that you can use all right, uh, to build any prototype that you want. Now let's move on to the actual uh, focus which is on the free RTOS. Alright, so what is free RTOS? Free RTOS is an open source RTOS that supports many different microcontrollers. Alright, so if you do want to create your own project uh, running on a OS or RTOS, okay, and free RTOS seems suitable, then please go to the website, alright, and, and check out the controllers that they support and the development kits that you may need to purchase in order to try out your code. Alright, so with the free RTOS running on ESP32, we are able to run tasks in parallel, both in a single core and dual core mode, manage interprocess communication, okay, like message queues and so on, perform synchronization, okay, and all the other RTOS stuff that you have learned, okay, new text, semaphore, uh, events, flags, and so on. Alright, so every RTOS has its own set of uh, features to support all the different uh, requirements that a OS should be able to fulfill. All right, the terminology may be different, the APIs may be different, but the concepts are very much the same. All right, so whatever you have learned in RTX RTOS is very much applicable to Free RTOS. All right, so what is concurrency? Okay, we have seen this okay with the KL25Z running RTX. All right, and basically concurrency is achieved with a single CPU core switching between different tasks during execution. All right, so as you can see here. I have a single CPU core and I constantly do the contact switching between the uh, task 1 and task 2. Alright, so we have seen this happening uh, with the RTX running on the KL25Z port. Now what is parallel execution? Parallel execution basically means you have dual or multiple cores and each core is able to execute code on its own uh, specific hardware. Alright, and since each CPU has its own processing capability, I can run multiple tasks in parallel. Correct? So that is what we call parallel execution. Now, with the OS introduced into a multi-core system, that is where we have parallel concurrent execution. All right, where the multi-threading is now spread out okay, ac across multiple cores. And within the same core, all right, we say that the tasks are executing concurrently. So in this case, for example, task 1 and task 2 are running concurrently. And similarly, task 3 and task 4 are running concurrently. But across both the cores, we say that they are executing in parallel. That means task 1 and task 2 is happening in parallel or is executing in parallel with task 3 and task 4. So which core should I use? All right. So you can execute execution instructions in parallel, okay? Uh, but they share common resources like memory and peripherals, okay? So all the hardware resources are shared, okay? But the code itself can execute on different cores. By default, okay, all your Arduino code runs on core one, okay, which is what we call the app CPU. And the Wi Fi or the connectivity based code runs on core zero, which is called the pro CPU. Okay, to know which core your current task is running at, you can use the function x port get core id. Alright, so this shows a simple um, code that you can run. Alright, to actually see that your default code is always running on core 1. Alright, so this allows you to identify your core. Now, free RTOS running on the ESP32 is basically giving us what we call a SMP system, symmetric multiprocessing. All right, it's basically a competing architecture where two or more identical CPU cores are connected to a single shared main memory and controlled by a single operating system. Okay, so when you say free RTOS is running, it is running, but it is inherently controlling both the cores. 
all right and we are able to run multiple threads on both these cores all right and achieve concurrent parallel execution all right so you have multiple cores running independently and each core has its own register file interrupts interrupt handling and so on but at the same time we have an identical view of the memory okay so each code accesses a particular memory address in the same uh, having the same effect regardless of which core it is run all right because the memory and the hardware resources are shared okay so whether i access the memory or the peripheral in core 0 or core 1 there is no difference in that now in terms of switching cores an smp system allows threads to switch cores okay so if you have a core uh, you can also specify okay what we call a core affinity which can fix a particular thread to a core a particular core all right so if i have a thread that is pinned to a particular core then i'm only able to run on that particular core if it is unpinned okay then i'm allowed to switch between both cores during execution okay now how do i create a task okay so i'm not going to go through the entire uh, all the features of the os in this lecture i'm just going to give you the very basic okay the rest of it if you are keen uh, you can go check on the doc documentation all right and explore yourself using the esp32 that you have all right so in general the vanilla rtos okay or vanilla free rtos which is the basic version that is on most other microcontrollers to create a task we say x task create but in the esp version since we have a dual core system we have a variation to that which is what we call x task create pin to core okay so later i'll show you the demo code all right from there you can see how to use this uh, api and the key thing is this x core id parameter over here okay which is the last parameter that we specify all right when we create a task all right and in in this uh, uh, for this parameter you can specify zero which means it will be tied to core zero one means tied to core one or if i put task no affinity then i will allow the task to run on both cores okay now task execution is very much similar the task states are running ready blocked or suspended okay task functions are typically implemented as an infinite loop okay we already know that and task functions should never return okay so what kind of a scheduling mechanism does free autos use it uses what we call a fixed priority preemptive scheduler with time slicing all right so every task is given a fixed priority or a constant priority upon creation and the highest priority ready state task will always be selected to run okay similar to rtx rtos the scheduler can switch execution to another task without the cooperation of the currently running task and this is tied to the first point that means as long as a higher priority task becomes ready i will automatically switch over to that higher priority task okay and at the same time the scheduler periodically switches execution between ready state tasks of the same priority in a round robin fashion time slicing is governed by a tick interrupt so this is also again very similar to your rtx rtos all right where you have the time slicing all right or round robin among the ready state tasks of equal priority okay so you can see there's actually a lot of similarity between what you learn in rtx rtos and what you are seeing here in the pre rtos now in terms of the priority okay as we said just now each core independently schedule tasks to run when a particular core selects a task the core will select the highest priority ready state task that can be run by that core all right and a task can be run by the core if the task has compatible affinity that means i am pinned to that particular core or i am unpinned that means i am fine with either core all right and the task is not currently being run by another core okay so let's look at some examples so you understand how this thing works in the esp32 context so let's say i have three tasks task a task b task c okay a priority 10 9 and 8 all right so in the free r task the priority levels are such that the higher the number the higher the priority so in this case task a is considered highest priority task b is medium and task c is the lowest priority here all right so if i have three tasks pinned to the cost as shown here what would happen is 
task A will run call will be running on call zero and task C will be running on call one. Alright, so even though I have task B, which is actually medium priority, but because it is pinned to call zero, call zero would already be running the higher priority task A. Alright, so task B is not run even though it is the second highest priority task. Alright, so this is one of the key things you must understand when you are tying a particular task to a call or pinning the task to a call. Alright. So preemption, okay, each call can be individually preempted by the scheduler if the scheduler determines that a higher priority task can run on that call. So again, a similar con concept that we have studied before. However, there are some instances where a higher priority task that becomes ready can be run on multiple calls. All right. So in this case, the scheduler only preempts one call. All right. So what we're saying is when a higher priority task becomes ready and I can and I'm not tied to any particular call. Who should I preempt or which call should I preempt? Should I preempt call zero or call one? All right. So the scheduler always gives preference to the current call when multiple calls can be preempted. Okay. So let's look at an example. Then we understand this concept. So for example, if I have three tasks, again, task A, B, and C. So in this case, task C is the highest priority. Task B is medium and task A is low. All right. In terms of priority levels and task A is currently running on call 0 and task B is currently running on call 1 and task C of priority 10 which is now the highest priority that is unpinned. So it's unpinned means it has no call affinity that means I can choose to go to either 0 or 1. I have not tied to any particular call and I was unblocked by task B. Okay I was unlock, unblocked by task B. Alright so as a result what would happen since task B was running on call 1 all right what would happen is task C would actually preempt task B all right and take over the call 1 all right so call 0 will still be running task A okay so again these are some of the things that you must understand okay when we are looking at assigning a task to a particular call this kind of behavior okay uh, which is again a bit different because in the RTX uh, on the uh, RTOS on the KL25Z we, we are running on a single call system. Alright, so with the dual call system, these are some of the other things that we need to manage. Alright, so let's let's look at the code. Okay, so I've prepared a simple code just to demonstrate how this um, dual call uh, system is going to be running. Okay, with the free RTOS. Alright, so. In the setup code, okay, I have um, created this uh, uh, start of the serial, all right, and then to demonstrate the code just now in the slides, the export get core, core ID is to display which core I'm running on, all right. So this is something you can try on your own as well. Now there are, um, I, I've set the pin mode for two LEDs to the output. Okay, one is the LED uh, red, which is uh, LED that I've added okay or connected to the board and this is the built-in led so there's one red led and this is blue okay now i've created two tasks okay using the s x task create pin to call all right so in terms of the uh, parameters okay the first one is the function okay the actual function name okay uh, that you want to implement all right uh, so this is what you actually need to put in the code all right uh, as the task that is uh, implementing this particular uh, code all right now this is the name of the task okay uh, you can use any name okay this is generally used for debug purposes all right the stack size all right that you need all right then the task input parameter so if i want to pass any parameters to the task when i'm starting up the task then i can put in a structure or, or some some list of parameters here then the task priority the task handle okay the task handle you can put it as now and finally is the core, the core where the task should run, all right? So I have created one LED red task, which is tied to core zero. And I've created the same thing, LED blue task tied to core one. All right, so in the loop code, all right, you actually don't need to do anything. Okay, you can just uh, comment it off. And what we're interested in is how the multitasking happens. So as we know, LED red task is going to be running on 
call 0 all right and blue task is going to be on call 1 so this is the red task and this is the blue task and both of them are doing the same thing which is basically to blink the leds on and off with a 500 millisecond delay all right so that is the code so it's a fairly simple code all right now let's see what happens when i execute this code all right so you can see that both the leds the blue led here and the red led here are both blinking together at the same time all right now of course i understand that you may think that this is quite trivial all right and your kl25z can do this very easily as well all right but you have to understand that what we are doing is we are running two separate tasks all right, on two different cores all right compared to kl25z where two tasks were running on a single core okay now the the effect of this may not be noticeable if you know if you're running a simple application like this but if you think of it in terms of a the need to run a very complex uh, computationally intensive algorithm all right and if i were to be able to uh, figure out a way to split up that that the algorithm into multiple tasks that can run concurrently and in parallel across two different cores then you may see that there is a significant performance improvement all right compared to running multiple tasks on a single core all right so the the the, the effectiveness of this all right may not be visible through a simple example like this but you need to think of the bigger picture of doing something very complex and then i have the ability to split it up into multiple tasks running on different cores concurrently okay so that's what we call the smp symmetric multiprocessing system all right so this is something you can try okay on your esp32 again i've just showed you the very basic task create and task delay all the other things like mutex semaphore message queues events flex and so on you can read up the documentation and you can try it out on your own all right and you know and since free rtos is again like i said it's open source uh, uh open source and is available you can easily think of uh, many different applications for it and like i said you go to the website you search on different controllers that support free rtos and you know if you have any project in mind you can easily start off with something like this all right so thank you for watching you know and i hope that this has given you a good you know intro into uh, symmetric multiprocessing on the esp32 thank you bye